I found a few things in the 2008 case when I went to the, um, the Southern Hemisphere for the first time to Australia for a puzzle party. Uh, and this is one of the items I picked up, which one has to have, I suppose. It's a, it's, a, well, it's a money box, of course, but it's also a little can to hold a koala bear. So let's get it up to nine. And inside, of course, is exactly what we have, what they promised. Very, very sweet little thing, which a small child would love because it's all very soft and plush. Let's see if I can get him into focus. Oh, yes. Very nicely made, too. He's looking left or right, is he? Oh, no, he doesn't actually move. The head doesn't move. He looks permanently to one side like that, as if he's distracted. Very nicely done. So an empty box, well, it should have coins in it. But that was a nice little find. I have had these. The first ones I, I got in this... Joanna came from Canada. They were the first people, I think, to think of the idea of getting some of their animal life put into a form of the soft toys and canning it, put it into cans. And I couldn't resist this one here from Australia when I was there because I love funny maps. And this is a wonderful idea of the Australians putting the world to write about how the map of the world should look. With, of course, Australia in the middle of the map and the right way up, well, for them. For us, it's no good. We're down at the bottom somewhere, hidden away. There's Australia right in the centre. If you like the political one, it's got on the, on the back the same thing, but in, in uh, the political back as well. But Australia is very much in the central focus point there. Just slightly off centre, that's good. It probably means they've sort of the idea of where's the actual sweet spot for, from the point of view of um, focusing. The other items, though, from this year were actually from... Um, New York, where I do love finding occasionally bits of pure art, which are not really toys, but they're something to show people. This one here, for instance, comes from the Museum of Design in New York. So you get the focus. It's a very, very nice idea, this. I've never seen it before. I've only got the one, and I wouldn't buy another one, but I'm very pleased to have the one. What an extraordinary idea that is. It's just a ball of wire, of quite stiff wire, which has been created beautifully spherically, probably wound round a kind of ball that I don't know how you put the ball, ball out afterwards. But if you turn it around very slowly, I'd found looking at it sometimes against a certain white background, the back part seemed to come in front, like a cedarscope almost, extraordinary. But it rolls and turns and just looks very, very beautiful. There's a line there which is almost like an equator, but it's not quite, it quickly merges and disappears. But, so the whole, and there's no obvious pole to it either. There's, it's not like a globe with, with poles and an equator. It's more subtle than that. So, and it's very light and very beautiful. And nice packaging too. So I'm very pleased to have that one. And the second idea, which is again is uh, a New York designer. This is a superb idea. Look at this. I'd never seen this before. So we're going to have someone who's practicing glass blowing, but they're practicing it not on glass, but on plastic. Yep, plastic blowing. Have you ever come across it before? I never have. Extraordinary. And here it is. It's, it's hidden inside here. If I can just lift it up. What an extraordinary thing. The packaging is necessary because it's quite delicate. This. So what the artist has taken is an ordinary ballpoint pen there's the front bit of it, it's the, the ink bit's missing. There's the back bit, the little knob on the back of the pen. And three quarters of the way down, they've heated it up very carefully and blown it like blown glass and made a, a bubble. See if we can get this into sharp focus. Isn't that weird? You have to have very, very um, careful and practice breathing or because it's, uh, it's a much more delicate thing to do than glass, I would think. So it would, would so easily burst. So a lovely bit of artwork. I'm very pleased to have that. Extraordinary. The last item to show, I better put it back because it's a bit delicate, that one. It's just something that some um, I quite like. It's, it's not as strong as the other two pieces, but it's something you perhaps you put in a darkened hallway when greeting the guests. It looks like a stone. It's a, it's a, it looks like a rock, but it's made of plastic, of course, and it's got batteries inside as well. So 
And when you turn it on like that, that's all that happens. It says welcome, which is nice. It's, it's welcoming people. There we are, which they need to come back. And we've got this rather pretty little thing of a butterfly on a flower and LEDs everywhere going into a little program of from kind of flashing lights. And it, I thought it might be a proximity switch or something, but it's not. It's just on all the time and sits there welcoming people to the house for a party. So it was a good year for me, 2007. But particularly down under, I found quite a lot of other Australian toys I've already shown, but these last two are not so well known. So good year for me, because um, both in America and in Australia, there's some very nice items. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.